Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Deduplicating Training Data Makes Language Models Better. This is from researchers from Google Research Brain Team and University of Pennsylvania. So let's start with the abstract. We find that existing language modeling datasets contain many near duplicates, examples, and long repetitive strings. So yeah, this is a pretty common problem that you'll find in many large scale datasets. And if these things are left untreated, then they may introduce a bias in the model that might make these models remember these commonly occurring repetitive patterns. So this paper proposes two techniques for efficiently deduplicating large scale datasets in order to make these models better and robust. For instance, authors found that in the C4 corpus, so C4 is again a large scale dataset that is derived out of common crawl data. It stands for Colossal Clean Crawled Corpus. And this dataset was also used to pre-train the Pegasus model. So in case you don't know what Pegasus is, I would recommend you to check out my video on that. It's about text summarization. So in this particular dataset, they found there was a 61 words English sentence that was repeated over 60,000 times in the training data. And not only that, the same sequence was also repeating almost 61 times in the validation set. So yeah, if you can think right, clearly such instances are meant to bias the model in terms of frequently reproducing these sequences. And since it's also occurring in the validation set, you're kind of overestimating the performance of your model. So in this paper, authors show that deduplication often results in reducing the size of the dataset, yet resulting in the models that have better accuracies. And that too with lesser number of training steps. So yeah, that's the entire goal of the paper. So let's move further and see what all dataset did they analyze. So they play around with four datasets. One is on Wikipedia, then one billion word bench, then you have C4, and finally you have some news dataset. So all of them are like really huge datasets. As in you can see like 31 million documents, then 2.9 million Wikipedia pages, 360 million web documents. So yeah, and these datasets are also standard ones that are used to train these transformers models such as GPT-2 and BERT. So now talking about the deduplication part, as we had discussed that they introduced two complementary methods for performing deduplication on large scale datasets. So one of which is based on deduplicating based on the substring match. And for the second one, they use minhash that estimates the n-gram similarity between the pair of examples that you have in the corpus. So higher the n-gram overlap that you have, the more the chances of overlapping two examples. So formally, you can kind of define your dataset as this. Let's say you have n examples, where think of an example as a sentence, and then each of those sentences can be represented as words, which is this, okay? So one of the simple techniques, obviously for deduplicating would be kind of to perform an exact string match between all the example pairs that you have. But due to the style that humans usually follow in writing things, might not always result in rewriting the exact string, but it might very well happen that some parts of a sentence might be repeated again and again. So for that, they have this exact substring deduplication, which they formally call as exact sub -STR, wherein let's say you have two examples or sentences xi and xj, and then you have some long substring that's common between both of these segments. So in order to remove the deduplication in such scenarios, you delete that common string that you have. And they set this parameter to k is equal to 50. So let's say if you are doing this at word level, then at least a 50 word length substring should be matching between both of these sentences. So if that's the case, you kind of remove that 50 length sequence and that way you have kind of deduplicated the entire thing. But performing this operation is quite a challenging task because for every example, you'll be kind of comparing with all the other examples that you have, which makes the complexity of this problem quadratic for which they use a data structure called suffix arrays under which the idea is to create a lexicographically sorted list of all the possible substring suffixes that we can have, which you do by concatenating all the examples that you have in your entire dataset D. So if example is a sentence, then you concatenate all the sentence and have one raw string. Once that is done, we create list of all the suffixes that are possible. So for example, if the sequence was just the word banana, then you have six substrings, which is a, na, ana, nana, ana, 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 and B, A, N, A, N, A. So all these are kind of substrings that you create. Then you sort this list lexicographically. So the suffix array that we'll get is, first we'll have the sixth index, which is this one. Then fourth, because that also starts with the character A and is smaller than this one. Then you get two. And then you start off with B because B comes before N, but after A. So this way we create a suffix array. Okay, once the suffix array creation is done, now comes the part where you want to search and get the duplicate ones. So for which let's suppose that you have a sequence S, which repeats exactly twice in our training dataset S at some position I and J. So from I to S and J to S, the strings are same. So now if you want to find the position of these I and J, 
we can do a quick lookup to our suffix array and we'll find the position of i and j adsend to each other because of the fact that the suffix array is lexicographically sorted. So this can be done by doing a linear scan over this array and get the duplicates. Obviously you can make it more sophisticated such as if the substring is of certain length, let's say of certain threshold, then only you consider them as duplicate. Else let's say if it's just two characters, then you can let it go. So for this paper, the authors essentially set the substring threshold to 50 tokens. So yeah, this was the first technique which was about exact substring matching. The second one what they propose is approximate matching with minhash. Under this technique, the idea is to approximate the deduplication process or so to say we want to approximate the Jacquard similarity by applying the hashing functions. So for example, if we have let's say two documents xi and xj, the first step is to represent every document xi or sj let's say with the respective set of n-grams and then we can use hash functions to approximate the Jacquard index. So Jacquard similarity is a measure of comparing two sets where you get a similarity of how similar two sets are. So this goes with this formula, where in the numerator you have the intersection between two sets and the denominator you have the union over two sets. So if you see the Venn diagram, the middle segment what we have is the intersection part. And then obviously you have the union which is A plus B minus of A intersection B. Because while counting A and B, you have already considered A intersection B, that's why we need to remove once. So this process could be compute intensive if you are dealing with very large sets, which could be the case here because you are representing every document with a set of their n-grams. And since the vocabulary could be pretty large, so will the n-grams be. So that's why we have the notion of min hashing, which comes into play and approximates the Jacquard index, where the idea that we have is, let's say this is the set S that we have of all these n-grams. We apply a hash function h to each of these n-grams and get their hashes. Let's call them h1, h2 and s3. And let's consider this hash function hashes all these values between 0 and 100. So once we are done with this hash, we sort these hash values in ascending order, starting from minimum to maximum. And then we pick first k hashes. Let's say if k is equal to 2, then we pick first two hashes as our reduced set representation. Now on these k values, we can do an intersection over union. And that way we approximate the original Jacquard similarity. And eventually if you keep increasing the value of k, you will be converging more towards the actual Jacquard similarity because you will be having more and more elements in the set to evaluate for the intersection and union. So this is how the minhash thing works. So this is one way where you pick the first k elements, which I think was proposed in the original same hash paper. But there have been many variants that also talk about having multiple hash functions and taking minimum from there. So yeah, but I think this paper also talks about keeping only the k smallest hash in grams. Cool, so this is exactly what we had discussed. Okay. So since this is an approximate similarity that we are computing, authors go ahead and add a subsequent filter step that also compares edit similarity post the min hash step. So wherein what you do is, if the edit similarity between the two documents xi and xj is greater than or equal to 0.8, then the two documents are said to be similar. And this similarity is calculated at a token level. So this goes with this formula. So you calculate the edit distance between both of them, which would basically consider how many tokens do you substitute, how many tokens do you replace, all of that stuff. You get that distance, you normalize it. So this is the overall distance that you get. Then you subtract it by one to get the similarity. So these are the two filters that the authors apply. First is to apply min hash plus the edit distance. If both of these conditions are satisfied, then the candidate basically qualifies as a duplicate. So yeah, these were the two techniques that the authors introduce. So if we see for C4 corpus, 3% of the training examples were duplicate in the training data itself and roughly 1.5% were duplicate and valid. And for real news, which is a news data set, 13% was duplicate in the training data itself, and 1.25% of the data is duplicate with the validation set. And that too, these were near duplicates. If you see the exact substrings, then this goes as close as 19%. So which is a pretty significant number in terms of having duplicates. Okay. So yeah, I think now we are done with the paper. Cool. So if you are still listening to this, Make sure to hit that like button and share it across with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye.